the goal of uh, RoboCup is that by the year 2050, we should be able to have robot soccer players which can beat the FIFA champions. 2015. Uh, 2050. 50, I'm kidding. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we have some time. <laughs> <laughs> We will see, show you the robots running before I talk to you more about it. Well, I've heard enough about theory. Here's some practice. Typically, there are uh, teams of six robots and six robots. We unfortunately do not have 12 robots in our lab at the moment. We're, we're working on building more. Um, typically, you'll find uh, teams playing with a defense of at least three robots or more, so they can be uh, more defensive. The way this, uh, this demo works and this soccer uh, league works is that there are two overhead cameras. There's one camera here and there's one camera there. And those cameras are observing the field uh, 60 times a second. They send their images uh, to that computer over there. That computer comes up with, uh, looks at the field, looks at colors around the field, and figures out there's an orange blob here, it has to be the ball. Uh, it looks for the color patterns, which are the indicative of the team robots. Uh, the central dot on the robots indicate the team. So you'll see that we have three yellow robots on the field right now, and one blue robot. And the other green and pink dots indicate the ID of the robots and their orientation and location. So that's how the computer knows exactly where all the robots are. So uh, when we were doing this, uh, the last shot, I'm just playing the referee, by the way. This is my referee stick, which is telling you, for example, stop. Uh, stop is a command which says, stay at least 50 centimeters away from the ball. And I'm gonna tell it indirect free kick for yellow. And it's gonna do something. And it's figured out that's a good place to be to try and shoot the goal. And that was a good block. So this is the camera's view of the field. And as you can see, the camera has uh, segmented out the green, the pink, and the yellow. It can feed it to our AI system and says that this robot's here, this robot's here, that robot's there, and the ball is there. Now the problem is that if you just write code to tell the robots what to do, when they do not do things right, then you're left wondering why did they not do things that we asked them to do? which is why we have spent a lot of time coming up with a, a, a viewer which can actually go backwards in time. Let's take a look at why this guy did not... Ah, all right, so he overshot. So he was trying to get to the position be just behind the ball, but he was unable to, which is why he overshot and was not able to take that kick there. In this graph down here, we can see the speed of the ball. So we can see that it uh, kicked at 2.6 meters per second, and the robot itself was moving at 2.5 meters per second. Uh, these are pretty speedy robots. For this robot, the colorization on this field indicates uh, what's the best location to be to position for a pass. And it has found that this red dot over here is the best location to be to get receive a pass because it's got an open angle over there. Uh, and this open angle is actually larger than this, which is why this is a much better place to be. Um, and these computations are running all the time and as you can see they, they change over time and they keep reevaluating and so on. In this particular league the robots themselves are uh, pretty simple, they don't do much computation on them. Uh, in this league uh, the focus is on uh, coordinated behaviors, on uh, seeing how we can uh, position these robots uh, perfectly for a pass and, and fa mm. fast gameplay. There are other leagues uh, like the standard platform league where the robot hardware is standard and uh, everybody just writes code for them and each robot has to figure out what to do on its own. Uh, that is a much uh, more difficult league because each robot independently needs to figure out where it is on the field. There is no overhead cameras. They need to know how to uh, tell the other people and the other people need to even think about, do I trust this person? He says that he saw the ball in front of him. Does he know where he is on the field and things like that? So that's very tricky. Yeah, when we play six on six of our own code, uh, it's averaging zero to one for uh, full games, which are 10 minutes and 10 minutes. It's object oriented and we use C++. Um, it's entirely written ground up from C++. Some of it is in assembly um, and it's very, very optimized for uh, speed. Um, this runs uh, 60 times a second. And uh, since if you take longer to process, that's, mu that's much more latency. And the kind of passes that you saw with the deflections,
they are made or uh, broken in the order of two milliseconds. How fast <coughs> do they go? Uh, these robots can go up to uh, 2.5 to 2.6 meters per second and the, they can kick the baller up to 15 meters per second. Uh, I mean, if you see, look at the wall, there are dents in the wall because... Um, the ball is a golf ball. I can show you one of the robots. So this robot does not have any electronics, it was uh, just a placeholder. But I can show you the main mechanical parts. The main mechanical part is this, this guy which is sliding over here, that's the main kicker. And the way the main kicker works is, uh, there is a slug over here which is a uh, soft iron core. And the soft iron core is propelled forward to this, uh, by this coil. This coil is actually driven by uh, three capacitors which are charged up to 200 uh, volts on the robot. And they discharge uh, a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, millicoulombs in, uh, in order of ma uh, milliseconds. So it's a lot of energy flowing through the system. So RoboCup is uh, an international competition uh, which happens every year in the summer uh, in a different location. This year it's going to be in Netherlands. In this particular league, there are about uh, 20 teams uh, from all universities, from universities across the globe.